in the last two videos, we talked a bit about how can, about the technology within Canvas, the assessment mechanisms which are available, and the mechanisms when, to be able to align program outcomes, pull them into your course, so that faculty can assess the work of students within the coursework and yet collect student achievement data. What we want to talk now is this aspect of automation, saving time for faculty and programs in the assessment process so that some of the struggles we have with an assessment can be alleviated through the technology. One of the things that people dislike most about assessment is, the, is collecting data and then being able to report it to someone else who has to put it together and create some type of report. Then we have to talk about that report. And if we can take that whole series of, of processes and automate it through technology, then we can begin the assessment process by looking at student achievement data disaggregated already by outcomes. So this is where we want to begin at this point. Yeah, so um, assessing in Canvas um, creates uh, data for each student at the program level. And Canvas, um, by its nature, uh, exports something that looks like this. Uh, so student and their, you know, what course it comes from, what term it's in, and their score on each of the assessed criteria or outcomes. And this isn't very useful. This still takes a lot of time to summarize and analyze uh, and make sense out of. So what we do in the Office of Assessment, what we can do for programs and what we've done for many programs, is take that uh, export and automatically convert it into something that looks like this, which is a Power BI dashboard uh, that shows student achievement. Uh, scores broken down by various demographic categories. Um, so if you look in this top right chart up here, uh, what you'll see is student achievement by outcome, and this is more of the general outcome category, uh, but what we can do within Power BI is actually drill down into each of the assessed criteria. So if I drill into written communication, you can see that it's uh, broken down into context and purpose and syntax and mechanics. And these were the, the items, the criteria that were actually assessed within Canvas and they have specific language behind them. Uh, so you can get into those specific areas and see that uh, syntax and mechanics has a lot higher uh, number of did not meet and met minimum expectations, so maybe we should focus on that or explore that further to figure out why that is and how we can improve it. Um, there are also, let me drill back up here, there, there's also down below a chart uh, that shows what percent of students um, reach the proficient level by outcome uh, so if we sort that lowest to highest, uh, as it is here, you can see that F2 calculation and B2 syntax and mechanics are the lowest. Again, that maybe gives us, gives us some ideas of things to improve. But it might be that uh, student achievement isn't the same by uh, various uh, categories of students. So it might matter whether students transferred into the program or started in the program as a freshman. Uh, so you can see that uh, by clicking on transfer here, we can actually see the scores immediately for transfer students. Click on non and see the scores for non-transfer students. And then go back to the uh, overall student, uh, uh, student uh, data. So doing this, uh, using these demographic slicers will allow you to explore the data um, and answer some questions that you may have had or, or test some assumptions you may have had about student achievement in your program. And we can customize this to meet your needs. So if you're interested in, let's say, first generation status, we can add a slicer for that uh, instead of transfer status. Um, if you're interested in, um, you know, whether students, uh, what grade students got in a prerequisite course, how many credit hours they had when they entered your program, um, really we connect to cases data. So we can take, in, take any uh, piece of data we have on students and potentially display it here as a slicer for you to use to explore uh, your student learning assessment data. And then we can also display this in multiple formats. So if I go to the next page, you can see there's a format that shows it, uh, the same data as a table. So if you have an accreditor um, who expects data in a very specific format for a report, we can automatically create that for you. And then all you have to do is export this or take a screenshot and put it in your accreditation report. And then of course, have all the narrative that goes along with it to say how you actually discussed this and how you made improvements based on this data, but you don't have to take the time to create the formatting and create the table and do all the things, uh, all the work uh, 
uh, that really doesn't add any value uh, to assessment. And you can really start with the uh, analysis and the discussion that will lead toward improvements. This technology is enabling programs to look toward the assessment process in its original purpose, and that's to be able to understand how and to what quality students are learning, what you as a program deems valuable. And if you can be able then to be able to drill down and look at the specific groups of students and to see if there's a difference in their achievement, then the program has something to talk about and to use assessment for its ultimate purpose, which is not reporting. The ultimate purpose of assessment is to identify, to find things out about the students that you can't find out through our normal mechanisms of grades. So this gives you a, a small bit of example of how automating data collection and the assessments within Canvas and then eventually within the Power BI visualizations can help you. And we as an Office of Assessment want to be able to design these visualizations in the way that your program desires to see things and can make use of this data for program improvements and programmatic and curricular decisions.